Good morning. Happy Wednesday hump day. Today's reading is loving yourself and loving the world. Today decide that your yoga practice is an offering of love to yourself. And I also talk about it being an investment in your future health and your current self. Many of us find that loving ourselves is a difficult thing to do. And I personally was not raised to focus on yourself. There was a theory that that was about vanity or um, it was conceited or arrogant. It's as if somehow self-indulgent or wrong to feel love for our own selves. So a lot of people, especially females, are taught not to. They're taught to externalize the love. But the reality is that in order to be able to love others, we need to begin by loving ourselves. How can we offer love to other people when we can't find it within our own self? Today, invite your yoga practice to become an affirmation of self-love. It's a gift to your health. It's an investment in your mental health. Uh, treating yourself with the same love and attention that you might offer to another person. Loving yourself is loving the world. And when you see someone who has high self-esteem or they're comfortable in their own skin, it's so you're drawn to them like a moth to a flame. The next one is compassion for others is compassion for yourself. So it's kind of flipping it. How critical are you towards others? How hard are you on yourself? We often criticize in others, but we least like in ourselves. They talk about it being a mirror, whether it's your partner or the friends or people you spend time with. We often uh, notice that when you find yourself critiquing in other people, ask yourself, what do I notice this quality or habit in myself? Then instead of resisting, try to soften and look more compassionately at your own imperfections, not at those of others. It's so easy to throw stones. Um, if you find that you can't change the habit or tendency, choose to accept it and manage it in a way that does not negatively affect your life. Having compassion for imperfections in others is also having compassion for yourself. And it might begin that you, um, I like to try to flip it instead of thinking, say I immediately think of something negative about somebody. Could you flip it and say, what do you like most about them? The opposite. Look for the dark and the light. Today we're going to use an animal card for inspiration and if it doesn't work, I have my yoga dice. Let's see. Giraffe. Mm, I'm going to do one more because I don't really have any giraffe poses. Dolphin. Oh yeah, I promised some of you we would do more shoulder stuff. Okay, this is meant to be then. Take time to play. Playfulness. Awesome. Let's take a look at this. And what does the book say? You're thinking too much about and doing too much, such that you're disconnected from your feelings. So we're, we are in a culture of action. I noticed that. The best way to integrate your intel intellect, emotions, and actions, believe it or not, is through play. We've been analyzing this and that, strategizing for the future at the cost of ignoring the present and a more basic need, which is just go and have some fun. I know any of you who has have little children or grandchildren are very good at dropping everything and embracing the play, especially if the grandchildren involve you. There are a couple of ways to play. One is a structured activity or game, so you purposely set aside to do it, or there's a great sense of socializing and playing with other people. Another is spontaneous, and that's something we often have a hard time doing. We like to overprogram our times. Dance, sing, make a joke. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when I hear a certain song, it definitely brings back um, some memories, which helps me trigger that play. So we're gonna start on the mat. Actually, we'll do one quick thing while we're up here. And I wanna work on things. They're gonna open the shoulders and we're looking for equilibrium between front and back body. Um, I often suffer from tight shoulders. I know some of you also do, and especially if we sleep curled in, we do a lot of foam technology. So let's start with our arms out and slowly bring them together. Press those palms together, open. And now imagine you're opening the opposite. I pretend there's a telephone pole behind me. And how far back can I take my arms and you might even have someone in the room, grab your wrists and help you. Without jutting head and belly out. So you're keeping the spine straight, moving the arms back around this central. So together, open, together, open. Awesome, now let's take it into cactus. Cactus arms, together, open, 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 together, open,
together, open. And I know some of you told me you're having a hard time with the bind in Eagle. So let's try this before we begin our practice. We're gonna see what our baseline is. So flexed arms, right into left. And right away, what happens? If I can't get that in there, I might do this. So I'm gonna bring it in either back to back or, and I, I can feel this is hard to do the bind today. Key here, I don't wanna bend those wrists. Straight wrists. And then the mean part is lifting up and down. Some of us have expressed that this and other shoulder binds have become really hard the last two or three years. And I noticed since COVID, because our routine changed so dramatically, we went from having a routine and doing our lives a certain way to almost two or three years of not that routine, quite often totally hours and hours of time to do a different routine, which didn't help the shoulders. Maybe you never used to play piano, and now you played a lot. Maybe you didn't knit a lot, and now you do. Scrub arms, now this side is really tight. I'm either gonna bring it across me, or, oh my gosh, so tight. Fine, up and down. What is going on? Up and down, up and down, nice. Okay, let's come to the mat. A little bit of floor work. Knees to chest, rocking side to side. Let's take our feet, knees to the mat, on the left, right arm opens to a T, left arm opens to a T. Inhale one, exhale. Inhale two, spread your fingers, anchor those nails, exhale. And if this right shoulder's not on the mat, please put something between your knees. I care more about the chest opening today than how stacked the knees are. And inhale, three. Center, knees to the floor on the right. Left arm opens to a T. Arms to a T. Inhale, one. Exhale, inhale, two. Exhale, and inhale, three. Center, right leg in. Left leg slides straight, point and flex. We're not focusing so much on the hips and hamstrings. Left hand takes right knee over, single leg spinal twist. Anchor the weight of that right arm down, palm up. You can even spread the nails and press them into the mat. Center, little bow. Left leg in, right leg slides straight, point and flex. Right hand takes left knee over. Single leg spinal twist, but key here is anchor that left arm, palm up. Center. Little boat. Egg beaters. And then pull those knees wide and just pause. And I can totally feel my inner thighs tight here. Staying here or coming to set up for happy baby, which feels like a squat, or coming into full happy baby. Still or rocking side to side. Soles together, pause. And release, let's come into recline cobbler. So soles are together, knees wide, arms to a T, two breaths. Inhale, one. Spread the fingers, anchor the nails. Exhale, inhale, two. Exhale, come into cactus. So now you're in recline goddess. And once more, <coughs> excuse me, you're anchoring those nails. And now can you make the hands, make a diamond above your head without looking? Then come back to cactus and then, oh my, right arms to side, body, elbows out. I do this upright, but for some reason it's super hard while I'm lying on the floor. Cactus, diamond, cactus, elbows to side, body without popping the chest. Cactus, diamond, cactus, Elbow side body. Let's come back to center. Can we do eagle arms on our back? So karate chop arms right into, I cannot even do this. <laughs> center, 
Then turn and try the other side. And what that means is quite often there are poses that we are determined to do, and when we're upright, we can cheat a little bit in our form. Right now, I'm in perfect alignment because the floor is there. When I'm upright, I bet you anything my body shifts and turns a little bit of torque here and there to get this finished product, whether it's a detriment to my alignment or not. And then back to center, feet in the air, roll out the ankles, legs wide, and pause here. And wow, that's tight today. I'm going to come back into cactus arms, flex feet, inhale one, exhale. Inhale two, exhale, inhale three, exhale, inhale four, and then I close the legs, cross over, flex, so it's a nice stretch here. Can you lean a little to the right, center? Other leg on top, left over, flex. You lean a little to the left and release, little boat. Okay, roll on your side and push up. Let's come into extended child's pose and we wanna work on opening the back behind the heart. This is one of the spots where if we're tight, it's going to affect shoulders and all the other poses that maybe we're used to doing in our body. So toes together, knees wide, Bum towards your heels, and let's keep the elbows straight. I like to push the floor away. My hands are shoulder width apart. Press the floor away, and I can even feel it in, behind my heart. Don't drop the chest yet, just drop your head. I'm going to dangle. Maybe a tiny little cat, cow here, just to stretch the upper back. If I want to go lower, I'm going to start to bring face and chest towards the earth. Arms are still straight. Option to come up on your fingertips and continue to press your chest towards the earth. Oh, that's intense. And then come back up. I'm going to try to do this. This is very hard. <laughs> so child pose, hands behind your back. Shoulders back. I can't even do that. Okay, tabletop. I used to be able to extend my arms. I'm so tight now. Tabletop, engage the core looking up. Let's do our cow. Engage the core turning into cat. Cow. Cat. Cow. Cat. Cow. Cat, and let's come back to neutral. Tuck your toes. Short downward dog if the knees are bent. Pedal is an option to stretch the feet and the calves. Right foot forward, left foot back, rise up. So you have a choice doing our regular warrior one or wide arm hallelujah pose. And you can see I have an extreme bend in the back of my Open the chest. Option come behind you. Interlace. I used to be able to lift these off my bum, but so tight now. Pressing that chest forward, back to word one. Hands down, feet together. Fold, rise, heart center. So these are a little different than our regular sun salutations. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Half back, plant all the way down. Sleeping Cobra, Baby Cobra, Dog, left foot forward, right foot back, rise, this is where you're going to choose, Warrior One Arms, Hallelujah Arms, look up, option, take your hands behind you, shoulders back, I have my hands interlaced on my tailbone, historically I would have forced myself to straighten those arms and lift them away from my bum, I'm feeling the tension. Hinge, feet together, fold, rise, heart center. Nice. Inhale up, exhale, fold. Half back, plant, all the way down. Cobra, dog, right foot forward, left foot back, rise. Option to come into hallelujah. Option to take the hands.
hand behind you. Feet together, fold, rise, heart center. Last one, inhale up. Oh, yeah. Wide arm swan dive. Half back, plant, all the way down. Cobra, dog, left foot forward, right foot back. Rise, straight arm, hallelujah, or behind you. Chest look up. Release your hands. Feet come together. Fold. Rise. Heart center. Nice. Okay. While we're here, we're going to try this experience with the strap. I want to take it folded in half behind you. Wrist face out. Engage the core and without jutting your chin or belly out. What is your range of motion of moving these away from your bum? So engage the core, rise, maybe side to side. Option to bend your knees and fold. <laughs> and come all the way up. Let's do it again. Side to side, pull away from you. Option to bend your knees and fold. And come on up. Let's shake it out and we'll do the other direction. Strap comes to the front of the body. Zombie arms. We'll do a little side to side. And as I rise up, I'm not able to see you, I'm going to give my arms a little more space. Possibly pausing here, or some of you are going to go all the way over. Don't hurt your body. This has to be within your natural range of motion. Zombie arms. Rise, side to side, option to take it all the way over, and I like to do it in threes for some reason. You've heard me tell the story, this, this action every day can prevent or help frozen shoulder, uh, tension building in your shoulder. I know Jane is an instrumentalist, a musician, so she probably has one shoulder tighter than the other. Zombie, side to side, and Oh yeah, all the way over. Okay, let's do our eagle arms again one more time. This time I'm not on the floor, so it might be easier. Karate chop, right into left. This time instead of making the bind, let's bend the left arm, right arm into the crook, pull it up, and gently pull that right arm across your body. Spread the fingers, so those flexed hands, hasta banda, I feel it into a lot more muscles, and release. Other side, right arm's gonna bend, left arm comes into the crease, flex the palms, pulling that left bicep across your body, belly engaged, staring forward, and release. Let's do our wall version. Right foot, right hip, right chest, right arm, right palm to the wall. Left arm bent at an angle. Press that left, right palm into the wall, the left hand, you're trying to look over your left shoulder while resisting the wall. And then release. Other side. Left foot, left hip, left arm. Press that left palm into the wall. The right arm resists the wall and look over the right shoulder. Now we're going to do the same thing on each arm, but as a diagonal. This will help neck and shoulders. Right foot, right hip, right arm on a diagonal. Left arm pushes against the wall. Oh my, and I feel this in your breast or your pec and your inner elbow, especially if you read or use technology a lot. Release, other side. Left foot, left chest, left breast. Left arm on a diagonal. Right arm presses into the wall. Look over the right shoulder and release. Nice, okay. Let's do uh, thread the needle here. Coming into tabletop. Right arm's gonna stay down, left arm to a T. And we'll do this three times on each side. So fingertips touch, left arm opens, and there's a bit of a spinal twist. You wanna stack these arms and look up at those left fingers. Spread those fingers, oh yeah. Come back through, thread the needle. And I'm resisting the floor with my right fingertips, left palm is up, and I can feel this behind my heart. 
Come on out, other side. Tabletop, right arm to a T. Open and twist. I forgot to do this three times, the other side. Two, flex that hand, open and twist. And this is my non-dominant side, I'm feeling it a lot easier than my dominant side. Flex and open, thread the needle. Those right nails are pressing the mat, left fingertips are resisting the mat. And then come on out. Now I want to get to some of our, actually we'll do the floor version of what we did on the wall. Arms to a T. Let's keep our right hand down, left arm bends the elbow. Can you roll onto your right side, pick up your head just a little bit, and that right palm is pressing into the floor, just like we did the wall. I look down, the feet are stacked, and my body is basically in line. The left arm is pressing into the floor. If you feel like you're not going to fall over, left arm in the sky, or let it fall back. And then back down. Stack your hands, windshield wiper, those feet. Other side. Arms to a T, left arm's going to stay down, rolling onto your left side, stack those feet, right arm's bending the elbow, resisting the floor, head is slightly off the floor, right arm in the sky. Oh yeah, my dominant side is so much tighter, I feel like I'm going to fall over. Stack your hand, windshield wiper. And then, come on back to tabletop. Let's do a few more things before we do um, our dolphin. So you, I'm sure that my friends with tight shoulders, it is a universal problem. Ironically, it comes from people who work out too much, and then it also comes from activities that don't involve working out at all. Let's start first, tabletop. Come onto your elbows into sphinx, palms into prayer, blade is on the floor. We'll go forward and back. Warming up those shoulders, chin beyond the hand if that's available to you. Option to continue this. Next version, let's take one block. Prayer hands. Press your bum back, head drops. Spread those fingers, press them into each other. Up and forward. Back. Oh. And up. Option to take one more block if this is feeling good and you want to go further. Prayer hands on the block. The blade, of, the wrist crease lines up with the block. Press those fingers into each other. Press the bum back, forehead to the mat. Now, normally my bum should be coming towards my heels. I'm super tight today. You can direct your bum towards your heels. And then come on out. Another variation of that is blocks or shoulder width apart, hands on the blocks, press your bum back, drop your forehead. Option to take those blocks even higher. Now I have two Stonehenge blocks, palms on the blocks, and drop your forehead. And come on out. This leads me to, oh, we like this one too. Blocks side by side. You're going to take left elbow, then right elbow, prayer hands to the sky, forehead behind the blocks. Spread those fingers, press the palms into each other. Some people take those thumbs to the back of their neck, and I can feel my bum way up. If I had someone here, I'd have them gently press down my hips. And then come on out. Woo! This leads us to my favorite dolphin. So maybe I'll do it on a diagonal. Lock here. Oh, now you really can't see. Elbows down. Press the palms down, forward and back into the chin. That might be enough. Some of you might like half plank, forward and back. And some of you might walk into the short dog. Forward back there's not a lot of movement and then come on out knees down stack your hands child's pose 
Wow, I don't know about you, but I'm curious to hear your feedback, how tight you are. I'm gonna come to the mat and seated. And do uh, two more shoulder things before we wind down. Taking the strap, straight arms, tear the strap from what you notice in the shoulder blades. Option to widen the hands as you rise the hands a little higher. Close your eyes and enjoy this journey. Don't look for the end. Enjoy this beautiful range of motion, whatever's happened in your shoulders. Kind of like a diary. Quite often if you've had an injury or repetitive strain from a sport you love, it starts to store in one side of our body because of our handedness. Maybe side to side, maybe bend the elbows, maybe straight arms all the way back. Two more. So much cat here. And I know you non-cat lovers would be like, why do you need five cats? There's a story behind each of them. Zombie arms, rise, side to side. Option to go all the way back. One more time. Zombie arms, rise, side to side, and all the way back. Nice. Option to fold that belt and take it behind you. Side to side or lift. I feel dramatically better than when we started. And release. Nice work. So today I chose this deck instead. Life loves you. I like how simple and sweet it is. It has 52 uh, cards. And what so I think you're supposed to do with some of these decks is stand it up inside the box and put it on your desk every day. It looks like there's even an app. Let's see what, what we're supposed to read today. Life loves me. Isn't that sweet? Kind of similar to what we talked about earlier. Knowing that if we radiate out love, it comes back to us. If we assume everyone loves us, it comes back to us. And they have a child. And that was probably the last time that we were a little more chill, less analytical. Life loves us all. Look at yourself in a mirror. Breathe in and say, life loves me. Hold it. And as you breathe out, smile. It's asking us to do that 10 times. It's kind of an odd homework. But again, like begets like. If I start my day with this positive affirmation, there's a guarantee it's going to feed into the rest of my life and I tend to radiate it out. Uh, sort of like if you're walking down the street and you walk with a smile, people smile back at you. Thank you so much for your effort. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.